Hello, MUS 1002 students. Today, we are going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, computer music programming languages. So, let's start off with the birth of the computer in the 20th century. During World War II, there was a lot of research into computers as code-breaking devices. They were also used to try and encrypt audio communications, which, after World War II, led to the possibility of digital synthesis, but it was extremely expensive. Uh, Bell Labs began their experiments in digital synthesis in the U.S. in 1957, creating the first digital-to-analog converter, allowing the creation of any theoretical waveform as long as you could control it. And in order to do that, they needed a computer language specifically for sound to control the DAC. This resulted in computer music pioneer Max Matthews creating the first of the Music N family of languages, simply called Music or Music 1. Music N, where N is the number, there's five iterations, Music 1 through 5, uh, are all languages that use unit generators, or UGENs, to code and connect modules similar to those on a modular synth. You would have a UGEN as an oscillator, a UGEN as an amplifier, a UGEN for reverb, and you would pass variables from one to the other, very similar to patching cables on a modular synth. This would make any sound theoretically possible to create in the software, and then to send that to the digital to analog converter to render it as audio. Uh, famously, this resulted in uh, 1961 of Matthews and a team at Bell Labs creating a computer that could sing the tune Daisy Bell, also known as Bicycle Built for Two. Uh, this so impressed a visiting science fiction writer, Arthur C. Clarke, that he wrote that in to his book, which was then turned into a movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. So, subsequent research uh, led to development on the music languages, uh, continuing with Music 4 becoming the basis of the C-Sound programming language, and Music 5 becoming the basis of RCT Mix, another very, very cool computer programming language for music. That was all going on primarily in the U.S. Uh, over in France, as this was happening, Yanis Zanakis was working at the Centre d'études de Mathématiques et Automatique Musicale, or SAMAMU, uh, and was exploring the use of probability theory and stochastic processes as a compositional tool. He would program a computer mainframe to run all sorts of probability simulations to determine the number of events that would occur in a single measure in an orchestral score uh, or to create uh, different dynamics for a score, etc. But his work would also re uh, result in the UPIC, the Unité Polygogique Informatique, CIMEMU. Uh, uh, this is a graphical tablet that would attach to a computer that would allow users to draw waveforms and volume envelopes, then store them and arrange them by drawing a graphical score of the graphical waveforms they had created that the computer would play. Uh, only problem, he only ever made one. <laughs> uh, but it had a huge and outsized influence. In addition to some of Zanakis' own pieces, like uh, the computer music classic Mycenae Alpha, it had a huge influence, uh, and it survives today in programs like High C and Metasynth, where you are drawing waveforms and drawing how the waveforms are played, uh, and in Ionix, which is a graphical sequencer where you're drawing curves and putting tracer boxes on the curves that will then send their information to control musical parameters in other software. More research has resulted in many, 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 many other languages for audio programming that have developed. Uh, we're not going to look into these, but some of the highlights include C Sound, Chuck, Faust, Kima, RTC Mix, 
and tidal cycles. Uh, instead, we're going to focus our attention on four major languages, Max MSP, Pure Data, Super Collider, and Sonic Pi. So we're going to start with Max MSP and Pure Data. These are what are called data flow languages. And they're a really great place to start because when you see examples of the code, they're probably going to be the most readable right off the bat without any training. So Max MSP is the most commonly used language for computer music. It was created by Miller S. Puckett while he was working at IRCAM, the Institut de Recherche et Coordination Acoustique Musique in Paris, as a way to create interactive scores for the Macintosh computer. So it's a data flow language. And what that means is that you have graphical objects that are connected together using virtual patch cords, very, very similar to a synth. Uh, this makes it very intuitive for musicians that if you have a max object for an oscillator, you connect that to the max object for an amplifier, and then you connect that to the object for output, and you will hear the oscillator, and you can adjust the amplifier and hear it change in volume and pitch. Max was first used to control MIDI effects modules for Philippe Monnery's piece Pluton for piano and various MIDI effects modules. That development led to the initial release of Max FTS, or Faster Than Sound, in 1989 for the next computer using an EarCam signal processing workstation, uh, which was a add-in card that was a basic digital signal processor along with an analog to digital and digital to analog converter. Uh, the downside of that was that they were very, very expensive and thus out of the budget for anyone who wanted to use it on their own. They were primarily the domain of universities at the time. <coughs> In 1990, Max was licensed to Opcode, who would have a lot of difficulty marking it. Uh, their difficulties in marketing Max led Puckett to develop Pure Data in 1996, which is an open source sister language to Max MSP. They are incredibly similar. Uh, if you learn one, you can very easily pick up the other. You just need to learn a couple of different uh, objects, and there's a couple of weird uh, little quirks grammatically. Uh, but they are very, very similar. Uh, in fact, I started on Pure Data and then switched over to Max when I could afford it. The rights to develop and market Max MSP were then acquired by David Ziccarelli, who had found the company Cycling 74 to market it. This is really uh, the key turning point for Max uh, in 96, uh, because Ziccarelli assembled a team that was very, very good at their job and significantly expanded the capabilities of Max so that it could manipulate real-time audio signals and synthesize sounds without specialized hardware. It would just use the sound card inside of your computer. This resulted in the first major extension of the language called Max MSP for Max Signal Processing, although a lot of people will also point out that Miller S. Puckett has the same MSP initials, uh, in 1997. The second major extension was Jitter, that uh, was added onto Max in 2003 to incorporate visual processing features to create audio reactive visuals. You could use this to take input from, say, a camera and glitch it out based on what was happening in the audio. Jitter is based heavily on popular languages of the time, like Natto uh, 0 plus 55 equal 3D and SoftVNS. Uh, Max was next extended in 2011 with Max 6 to include the Gen language for sample by sample processing, which allows you to edit each sample in a waveform individually at incredibly high speeds with very, very cool results. Uh, in 2013, Jitter was revised for better OpenGL rendering, and in 2018, Max 8 came out and was expanded to include multi-channel object wrappers and a package manager. This means that you could take one oscillator object, put it in the MC wrapper, and then say, okay, I now want this one 
sine wave instead to generate 128 sine waves. I want them all to deviate slightly in frequency to create a cool binaural beating effect. Then I'm going to sum it down to two channels. Here is an example of some Max code. Uh, this is a software instrument that I created using a number of uh, external libraries. Most importantly, uh, EarCam's SPAT, or Spatializer uh, library. So this takes in audio, audio uh, from a MIDI device, and it converts that into uh, eight different channels, each of which is pro uh, spatialized differently and processed with the same effects after the spatialization. And you can see a little bit of the spatialization indicator in the bottom left. You've got eight speakers. Number one is directly in front of the user, and then they go around in a clockwise fashion. So you get some really cool effects with that. As mentioned, Pure Data is the open source sister language to MaxMSP, uh, created by Miller Puckett and released in 1996. It is commonly called PD, generally. Uh, that is how I will refer to it from here on out. So PD is very similar in most respects, but here's the important one. Max processes audio on the computer's audio interface, on the sound card. PD processes audio on the CPU as much as possible to avoid the bottlenecks and stuttering that can happen when you're doing everything on the interface. More importantly, this makes it really, really easy to embed PD as a sound engine in mobile apps or on games using the libpd library, which is freely available on GitHub. That means that I can take any code that I write in PD and put it into a game. And in fact, that is a very popular thing to do. Uh, it also makes PD a favorite to use for installation art, where you can take a small computer like the uh, sub $100 Raspberry Pi or the Beagle Board, load it up to auto boot and run your PD code. As soon as you hit power, within about 30 seconds, your sonic sculpture or your physical object that is uh, manipulating sound using PD is up and running. Uh, PD is also, like Max, capable of sending data over a network, which makes it amazingly easy to use with the Open Sound Control, or OSC, protocol. This lets you use PD to control other devices, other programming languages, even things like the Unity game engine all over the internet. So I can have a PD installation in Europe and I can control it using an OSC device on my iPhone in the US. It's very cool. And here is an example of some PD code uh, that I wrote back many, many years ago in, uh, in college. Uh, this is just a simple program for playing back uh, predefined sound cues uh, in a piece called Hypnos that was originally for uh, trumpet and computer and then later revised for soprano saxophone and then it, it was revised again for violin and computer. Uh, in every case you have the graphical interface that the performer sees. They just hit a uh, space bar or a foot pedal to trigger the cues. There's a large metronome that blinks so that they can keep in sync. And there is another large box that blinks when a cue is accepted. And you've got timers for two segments in the score that are uh, specifically timed for 20 seconds and a minute and 30 seconds. And then elsewhere, you can see the internal structure where it's receiving the cue note. And then based on which cue it has received, it's triggering different sub patches. Uh, then there's just a little view of some of the sub patches there. So all graphical, uh, very, very much not as pretty as Max, but that means that it can be run on very minimal hardware. But of course, there are also text-based languages. And two of the more popular ones that we're going to look at are Super Collider 
and Sonic Pi, which is appropriate because similar to Max and PD, these are related languages. Super Collider, also commonly called SC3 for Super Collider version 3, is a text-based language for real-time audio synthesis, processing, and algorithmic composition. It was developed by James McCartney and first released commercially in 1996, and then released as open source software in 2002. Uh, it's an object-oriented language, and it exists in two parts. The two parts are the language called SC Lang, which is based on the Smalltalk programming language and uses the exact same syntax. That interacts with the Super Collider server, which is called SC Synth, and is running in the background and handling all of the audio processing and audio generation and dealing with all of that, with whatever is sent to it by the language, and rendering that out as audio. Like the Music N family of languages, Super Collider uses UGENs that describe common digital signal processing tasks and synth modules. Uh, but unlike data flow languages, being text-based allows for easy coding of things like conditional statements, if, then, else, if the volume of this input exceeds this threshold, do X, otherwise do Y. That's very easy to do in Super Collider, but I can't really do that as easily in Max. Um, I can't do loops of for x, you know, x is less than uh, 5x++. Plus plus. Uh, that type of stuff, again, I can do that very easily in Super Collider. I can't do that as easily as in a data flow language. Uh, the result is that it makes it really well suited to algorithmic composition and data sonification, where I'm taking existing data and rendering it as audio because I have the ability to parse through step by step and go element by element like that with conditionals and loops. Super Collider can also create basic user interfaces and like Max and PD, it can communicate via OSC. This means that it's very easy to create uh, an interface on a program like Touch OSC or Jockey OSC, both for iOS, that have a built-in interface editor. So I can create an interface on my phone, and then I can make sure that that is talking to Super Collider over the internet. And then I can control the different parameters directly from my phone with nice dials and sliders and toggle boxes uh, during a live performance. So Super Collider is very popular in academic circles, in sound design, and in installation art, uh, where you don't really need to have a user interface. But there is a quirk that everything in Super Collider is a synth, and every synth has to be defined using what's called a synth def before you can use it, which makes it really awkward for live coding, uh, which is becoming a very popular thing to do with music right now. Live coding is typing code to create music in real time, generally in a club or in an art gallery. Here is an example of Super Collider that I coded out. Uh, this is just the standard uh, Krell patch from back when we talked about synthesis. And it's just got a bunch of code that is defining everything within uh, the feedback network of uh, the envelopes and how they interact. Very cool program. But, like I said, live coding. Very popular thing now, uh, but the language of Super Collider makes it a little clunky for that. However, the server, SC Synth, can be used in live coding with predefined synths built into the language, or if you spend the time to predefine a bunch of them and save the code and then run that before your live coding session, you can actually use Super Collider. Uh, in fact, this is one of the reasons that led to the creation of Sonic Pi, a programming language created by Sam Aaron in 2012 at the University of Cambridge Computer Laboratory. Sonic Pi uses SC Synth for all of the sound generation. Much like Super Collider, you just have SC Synth running in the background and you send it information from the code editor. But Sonic Pi uses the Ruby 
programming languages syntax, which is much easier and much more forgiving for the coding. The focus of Sonic Pi, and indeed of pretty much all live coding, is creating time-synchronized loops that the user can change and reevaluate without stopping the performance. If I've got a session running in Sonic Pi, I make some changes, I hit run again, and it keeps going without dropping a beat. It's great. It's very fun. Uh, this makes it possible to create an entire piece from code as it's playing, using loops, and because almost all of uh, Ruby's feature set is present, you can do a lot of cool algorithmic processing and conditionals and all sorts of uh, loops. Uh, computer loops, not musical loops. This makes it very popular in the algo rave scene, where dance music is generated live using coding languages for live coding, like Sonic Pi, Title Cycles, uh, which is based on the Haskell language, or Foxdot, which is based on Python. Like Super Collider, Sonic Pi is also small enough to easily install on a Raspberry Pi, which makes it a great tool for teaching and learning coding fundamentals. Um, I've taught courses on this for middle school students, and it is a blast. I can have pretty much anybody up and running on Sonic Pi with about a week's worth of uh, classes. It is very fun. I strongly recommend checking it out. They've got great tutorials and a lot of uh, very cool examples on the web. And here is just an example of some Sonic Pi code. Uh, it's got a live loop defined to create a uh, tempo. And then within that, I've got uh, effects loops and then live loops inside of the effects. And then everything is synchronized. If I make a change, I just hit run again and it will immediately apply the change at the next beat from the metronome without uh, having to stop and start the code. Very fun. Uh, really, really great program. Uh, but those are just a couple of the many programming languages that are used for computer music right now, uh, today.